Yum, yum! Hey, this is Ed from Pixel Fondue, and in this video, I'm going to cover the Fusion Pi menu. So I'll press Control F to bring up the Fusion Pi menu, and this just gives us quick access to some key features of Mesh Fusion. So to start, I'm going to select the bottom most option, which is Add Cubic Geometry. That brings up this Fusion Cubic Presets um, menu. The top part is kind of like a preset browser, where we have these folders. And the bottom part has all of these buttons for placing and applying whatever we have selected in the preset browser part. Now we also have a directory section, which is kind of hidden here, and it's just accessible by clicking on this left part and pulling it out. Um, but for now, we're just going to keep that hidden. And I'm going to double click on the Fusion Assets fol uh, folder, and then I'll double click on the Fusion Meshes folder, and then I'll double click on the Cubics folder. And this should be familiar from the other videos. We have these cubics here that are all quad meshes, and these are ideal for working with mesh fusion. So I'm just going to double click the cube barrel to bring that into the scene. And then I'm also going to double click the cylinder. So I want this barrel to be the primary fusion source in a new mesh fusion setup. So with the barrel selected, I'm going to hold Control F to once again bring up the Fusion Pi menu, and I'm going to now choose the topmost option, which is New Fusion. So when I do that, we get the New Fusion menu, and I'm just going to leave everything at the defaults. So the name is going to be Fusion Item, and I'll just click New Fusion with selected meshes. So now in the items list, we have a new Fusion Item, and our Q Barrel Mesh Item is highlighted green, which corresponds to the green wireframe. And that just means that we have a primary. So just to be uh, organized, I'm going to take my camera and my directional light and just pull that up to the top of the item list. And then I'm also going to delete the empty mesh item. So now I want to uh, subtract this cylinder from the barrel. The easiest way to do this is to use the drag and drop feature. Uh, I'll just go over that again, even though we're not going to do it. I'll left mouse button click on the cylinder and drag it onto the primary. And in the popover form, I could choose Fusion Apply Subtraction, but since we're trying to learn the Fusion Pi menu, I'm going to do it a different way. So I'll hold Control F to bring up the Fusion Pi menu, and this rightmost option gives us the Fusion Operations popover. So I'll choose that, and then I'll pin it, and I'm just going to drag it over to the left here so we can compare it to the Fusion Vertical tab, or the Fusion Side tab here. You'll notice that these two uh, uh, forms are very similar, except the Fusion Operations tab here doesn't have the cut, copy, paste, split buttons, and it doesn't have the more Fusion control buttons. But it's nice to have open in case you want to also have the basic or deform or duplicate um, vertical tabs open. So with this uh, form uh, present, I'm going to select the cylinder, and then I'll shift select the barrel. And underneath Set Mesh Roll and Apply, I'm going to choose the first icon, which is Set New Mesh to Subtractive Trim and Apply to Other Selected Meshes. So once I do that, we now have the cylinder uh, subtractively trimming from the, the barrel mesh. So now I'm going to pull in some other uh, cubics. So once again, I'll hold Control F to bring up the Fusion Pi menu, and I'll return to the cubic geometry uh, browser, and I'm going to bring in a cube and this cone. So with the cone selected, I'll just move this and then I'll rotate it about 90 degrees in the x-axis. And then with the cube, I'm just going to scale this in the x to make it more narrow maybe a little bit more. And then I'll scale it up in the Y and I'll increase its scale in the Z. And then I'll move it to about here. Then in polygons mode, I'll select all the polygons, control C to copy, N for new mesh item, control V to paste, E for rotate, and I'll just rotate these 90 degrees in the Z. Okay. Now in items mode, I'm going to select both cubes as well as the cone and I'm going to shift select the barrel 
and then I'll hold Control F to bring up the Fusion preset browser, and I'll return to the Fusion operations popover. And I'm once again going to choose the first icon underneath set mesh roll and apply, and that will subtract uh, all of those new uh, mesh items from the primary. So now we have one, two, three, four mesh items that are trimming subtractively. And just to stay tidy, I'm going to pull those into place underneath the uh, primary mesh item in the item list. Now, the more uh, fusion source meshes you get in your scene, the more cluttered it's going to become. Now, you could just uh, toggle the visibility in the item list by clicking on the uh, little eye icons, or using the fusion pie menu, I can hold Control F and choose the rightmost option, which toggles the source visibility, like so. So that's really handy. And now we can have a nice look at our uh, results from our fusing. So again, to make those visible, I can hold Control and choose the rightmost option. Now we can see them. Now if I hold Control and F, the rightmost option, or the, the top rightmost option, is select source meshes. If I choose that, it will just select all of the visible uh, source meshes. Now I'm going to toggle the source visibility, and I'm going to now choose the leftmost option, which is create update strip items. Actually, before I do that, let's actually try to uh, select the strips. So you'll notice that if I lasso select, nothing gets selected. And if you remember from the last video, um, the strips don't uh, become selectable immediately. You kind of have to manually uh, create them. So the mesh fusion item has no child items. So we know there's no strips because strips are always uh, child items of the uh, fusion item. So I'll hold Control F and choose the leftmost option, which is create or update strip items. And once I do that, we now have all of these uh, strip items. So I can select the strips and that brings up the fusion strips uh, menu. And I can shift select more strips or I can select them individually like so. Now, if I hold Control F, the top left selection is select all strips. If I choose that, all of the uh, selectable strips will be selected. Now, this brings up the final option for the Fusion Pie menu, which is the bottom left, add all substrip items. So let's explain what that is. It's a little bit of a tricky one. So if I expand uh, all of the strip items by holding Shift and left mouse button clicking on this little uh, triangle next to the fusion item to expose all of these strip items and then I hold control F and choose select all strips you'll notice that all of these substrips are selected but there are, are these uh, parent strips that aren't selected so let's see what happens if I select these instead so I'm just control clicking on all of the parent uh, strip items so they're all selected but nothing in the viewport appears to be selected. Now in the uh, HUD at the bottom right, we could see that nine items are selected. So in order to show what these parent strips are, I'm actually going to come over to the Fusion uh, Strips properties and underneath Substrips, I'm going to delete all substrip items. So once that done, that's done, I'm going to come back to the item list and you'll notice that we now only have nine uh, strip items. So we no longer have the substrips. So what that means is now if I go to select one strip, rather than uh, selecting the substrip by itself, it actually selects the sibling strips. So I can no longer select one strip at a time. Instead, I'm selecting four strips in this case. And if I try to select this top strip, it actually selects the top and bottom. So in order to get these substrips back, I can hold Control F and choose the leftmost or the left uh, bottom most option. Add all substrip items. And now all of our substrips are back. So now I can select these individually, and it won't select the other three uh, sibling strips. So that covers the, uh, 
all the options for the Fusion Pi menu. Now let's actually do one more cubic. Let's bring one more cubic in so that I can explain one final feature. So I'll hold Control F and choose Add Cubic Geometry. I'm going to pin the Fusion Cubic Preset menu, and I'm going to bring in this Q Ellipsoid 2. And then in Polygons mode, I'm just going to scale that in a little bit, like so. And then I'm going to hold Control F to bring over the Fusion Operations popover. I'll pin that and I'll make my uh, primary visible. And then I'm just going to drag the Q ellipsoid beneath the uh, trim subtractive meshes. So with this new ellipsoid selected and the barrel selected, I'm going to choose the center icon underneath set mesh roll and apply. And that will set the uh, ellipsoid to be an intersect trim and it will intersect away or trim away the, uh, the barrel. So now let's talk about these buttons down here in the Cubic Preset Browser. I'm going to select this nose cone uh, cubic, and I'm also going to select some of the elements of the primary. I'll choose these two uh, polygons. So I'm going to place this nose cone uh, cubic everywhere I have uh, a polygon selected. So I have these three polygons selected, and then I'll choose from this placement pull down, combine align scale to elements, in this case the element will be polygon, and the placement is set to combine. That means I'll get three of these nose cones, one for each polygon, and it's going to be combined into one mesh item. So while I'm only going to have one mesh item with three nose cones, and I want it to scale to 100%, that's fine, and I don't want any poly mirroring, and I want it to apply uh, as a primary. So I'll choose this first icon. Let me just do that again. Oh, I had two um, mesh items selected, so you can only have one selected. Here we go. And there they are. So we have this one mesh item with three cones, and it's scaling to 100%. Let me just undo that. And this time, let's change some things. I'll make this 150% and I'll subtract it. And then Control F and the rightmost option, toggle source visibility. So now it's subtracting. I'll just undo that. Let's choose some different polygons. And also let's change poly mirror to Y and see what happens if I subtract that. Okay, so now if I toggle the source visibility, you can see we're getting um, kind of like these little alcoves in the top and bottom. And it's based on, whoops, it's based on the polygons that we had selected on this uh, primary barrel. Now when it comes to these options, you can only um, choose a primary item if you're going to use these first three buttons. Let me actually undo some of this and I'll show you that you don't need to use Fusion with this because I can always choose this button right here, which will just add whatever is selected as a uh, mesh item that's not part of the Fusion. So if I click that, we now just have uh, the cubic uh, and it's a regular mesh item. So it doesn't have a role in the uh, Fusion setup. So I'll just undo that. And let's finally talk about the placement. It's also a good idea just to go over um, these placement options. They're pretty interesting. But uh, this placement where it's combined, I'm just going to change that to multiple. And when I now apply it, instead of having uh, all of these nose cones that we brought in as one mesh item, we have four now. As you can see here. So I'll just undo that. Uh, I think it's better for Mesh Fusion if you can, uh, if it's possible to have everything combined. And then let me also just show you single. Um, by doing single, it will just bring in a single nose cone and the placement will be an average of these four um, polygons. 
So it's going to bring in basically one nose cone at the center of these four polygons. So there it is. And it brought in two because I have the poly mirror set to Y. So let me just undo that, turn off uh, the mirroring and bring that in again, and it will just be one. This is definitely something that you have to use a little bit to get a feel for, uh, but it's really, uh, it's pretty interesting. It's a really cool uh, feature. So I'm just going to select these manually, these other polygons, and then I'll bring in this nose cone as a subtracted trim. Whoops, I brought it in as a single. Let me just change that to combined. There we go. Now let's just do one more thing. So I'm going to select uh, this Q nose cone mesh item, which contains these eight uh, nose cones. And I'm going to choose this uh, far right option, which will duplicate the mesh item, uh, but it won't set a roll. It'll be kind of separate from the fusion setup. So now we have this Q nose cone right here. And I'm actually going to come over to the deform tab and uh, use the push tool to push them inward to make them a little bit smaller. That looks good. And then I'm going to use this uh, new uh, set of nose cones as a new fusion operation. So it'll be a whole new fusion setup. So I'll hold control F to bring up the fusion pie menu and I'll choose new fusion. And I'll just call this fusion item 02 and click New Fusion with Selected Meshes. Now I'm going to recycle this Q ellipsoid. So I'll select this Q ellipsoid, which is an intersect trim, and I'll shift select the, or I'll control select the nose cones, and I'm just going to click Trim. Now if I hold control F and toggle the source of visibility, you'll notice something interesting happens. I toggled the source of visibility, but some of the uh, fusion source wireframes are still visible. And that's because we now have two fusion items. So if I want these to disappear, I have to select the appropriate fusion item, control F and toggle source visibility. And now they've uh, uh, disappeared, the wireframes. So now we have two fusion items here and they kind of uh, fit together. I can come over to this second fusion item and I can update the strip items. And I can set the strip width to something like 15 millimeters, and I can change the profile to 20%. I can do the same for the original uh, mesh item. See, I can select all the strips. Whoops. Make sure I'm in the right uh, fusion item. I might have to also update the strip items. There we go. And now I'll change this to 15 millimeters just so they're similar and 20% strip width. And it looks like I didn't get this one right here. So let me select all the strips there. Set that to 15, oops, 15 millimeters and 20%. There we go. So that's looking pretty good. And then uh, control one to toggle the wireframe. And yeah, that explains the Fusion Pi menu and the uh, Fusion Cubic preset browser. Definitely something worth exploring. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for more videos from Pixel Fondue. Yum, yum.